We often say that LLMs are stochastic parrots, but why? Where does this stochasticity come from? Well, this is because most closed source LLMs like ChatGPT or Claude do not output the most probable words, but they sample the word based on the probabilities provided by the models. Have you heard of the concept of temperature for large language models? This is a parameter that allows us to adjust how the sampling is performed. Let's get into it. So this strategy will help us add some more randomness to the generation of the text. So this is an image that we saw before. We have the encoder, we have the decoder, and we have some internal decoder hidden state. We have the linear layer that projects the hidden states into some predictions. But here is how I lied previously. What the linear layer is doing is not projecting the hidden state into predictions. It is projecting the hidden states into what we call logits. And only when I take the softmax transformation, I get what I can call probabilities. The logits, they don't have any reason to be bounded between 0 and 1. In principle, they can go from minus infinity to plus infinity, where probabilities, they are supposed to be bounded between 0 and 1. And this is what ensures the softmax transformation. So let's look a bit more closely to the softmax transformation. What's happening there? So let's say we have a vector of logits instead of predictions. And I'm going to say that this vector has three elements, A, B, and C. So what's happening when we say we do a softmax transformation? Well, to actually transform that vector A, B, C into a vector of probabilities, what we do is we take the exponential of A, the exponential of B, the exponential of C, and we normalize by a constant C. This constant C is just the sum of all the different exponentials. This ensures that when we sum the different elements of that vector, it sums to 1, like probabilities should. So the softmax transformation guarantees that the elements are bounded between 0 and 1, and they sum to 1, like any probabilities. The softmax transformation has another effect. So let's say we have the values of A, B, C, and those red bars are supposed to represent the values of A, B, C. So you can see that A, B, C are quite close to each other. So what does softmax mean? It means soft maximum. What it will do, it will take the maximum value in the set of values, and it will accentuate the largest value while reducing the other values. So whatever value is the largest is going to be accentuated, and whatever values are not is going to be minimized by this transformation. Why did we talk about the softmax transform? Well, ensuring that we have probabilities instead of logits ensures that we can now do some sampling. If we have probabilities, we can apply sampling methods. And the strategy of the multinomial sampling generation is about choosing the next token by sampling using the probability given by the model. Here, I have the softmax probability, E of x, normalized by the constant C, x being one of the values in that vector. And it may well be that the next word that is predicted is a word u, but it's not guaranteed. So let's look at the vector of probabilities. So now I normalize the vector by applying the softmax transform. And you can see that we have three large values that are appearing in that vector. We have 0 0.14, 0 0.16, and 0.12. If we were to apply the greedy search, we would choose U because U has the highest probability to be. But with the multinomial sampling generation, at and fill are likely words to be chosen as well. And every word in the vector can be chosen, but it is dependent on the probability that the model predicted for each of those words. Now, any of the words can be predicted if we sample with a probability that relates to the softmax transformation. And very likely, you can be chosen, like any of the other words available in the vocabulary. The problem with that process is that the sampling is very dependent on the analytical form of the softmax transformation. We could imagine having another transformation that leads to probability as well. To solve for that, we can include a new parameter in the softmax transform that we're going to call the temperature. So instead of applying the exponential without any other parameter, 
we're going to divide each of the logits by the temperature parameter. This will allow to regulate how the sampling is performed. Again, we compute the constant C as the sum of the different exponentials, and we include in the exponential the parameter temperature and all the elements in the vector sum to one. So let's try to understand the effect of this temperature on the way the sampling is performed. So this diagram is supposed to represent what would look the softmax transform. So imagine that the x-axis is the original value, the y-axis is a softmax transform. Here I'm sketching the transform for temperature equal to one. This is equivalent to if we didn't have any temperature like we saw earlier. And you can see that we have a slight increase for the largest values. And the largest values will be enhanced while the lower values will be reduced. Now, what happens if I choose a temperature equal to 10? Well, you can see that the transform is reduced to a flat line. This means that I have as much probability for each of the elements in the vector. And I don't see any more of this rising part of the curve. So having a high temperature is pretty equivalent to choosing the words at random in the vector. Let's see what happens now if I take a temperature that is 0.1. You can see that the accentuation of the value of the softmax transform is much higher when the original values are high. And you will notice that the softmax becomes harder, meaning that I have a function that looks more like a maximum value instead of a soft maximum value. And having a low temperature mimics the effect we saw when we looked at the greedy search generation. So again, let's look at temperature equal 0.1. You can see that when I have a temperature that is 0.1, most of the words will have a probability that are close to zero. Only the words that had the higher values earlier have a substantial probability to be chosen in the next step. If I were to reduce the temperature to zero, you would have a probability of one where at would have a probability of zero. At has still a non-zero probability to be chosen, but it's less likely. So having a low temperature will behave very similarly to a greedy search. And you can compare that to temperature equal to one, where the probability of choosing u and the probability of choosing at are almost similar. If I were to choose t equal one, I would have as much chance to choose the word at than the word u, but if I were to choose a temperature equal to 0.1, two times out of three, I would get the word u. Now, if I choose t equal to 10, you would see that the probabilities are almost equal in every element of that vector. This is almost uniformly random. This means that the model is going to generate random text, so this is going to generate garbage text. So it is very important to choose the temperature carefully. So, small parentheses. Why do we call this temperature? Well, in physics, this distribution is called the Boltzmann or the Gibbs distribution. This is a very common distribution in statistical physics, and this distribution captures the distribution of the energy levels in a set of particles. And in the case of physics, the temperature is a common physical temperature that we know, and the people that implemented for the first time this softmax distribution with the temperature they basically reuse the jargon that we used in physics, meaning that they use the word temperature. In physics, when the temperature goes close to zero, the energy levels are frozen, meaning that we have one accessible energy level. And when the temperature goes to zero in large language models, this means that the generation of text is deterministic. Only one sentence is possible to be generated. In physics, when the temperature goes to infinity, all the energy levels are equally accessible, where in LLMs, where the temperature goes to infinity, all the possible sentences can be generated. So multinomial sampling has a lot of advantages. It is diverse and creative. Multinomial sampling can produce more varied and creative text compared to deterministic methods like greedy or beam search. It allows the model to explore a wider range of linguistic expressions. It reduces repetitiveness. Greedy search can result in repetitive or predictable text, but multinomial sampling can generate more dynamic and interesting sequences. It also better explores the model capabilities. Because the approach does not always favor the most likely next word, it can provide a better sense of the full range of the model's language capabilities. 
It is very useful for certain applications where creativity or diversity in output is more important than strict adherence to the most likely sequence, such as in creative writing or brainstorming tools. It also has some problems. The randomness induced by the multinomial sampling can lead to less coherent or contextually relevant text. The generated text might sometimes be nonsensical or off-topic. It is obviously unpredictable. The stochastic nature of this method means that the output can be highly unpredictable. This can be a problem in applications where consistency and reliability are important. It is difficult to ensure the quality of the output. The generated text often requires more post-processing or manual editing to ensure it meets desired standards. It's difficult to control the output, so controlling the style, the tone, or content of the generated text can be more difficult compared to deterministic methods. And it is very dependent on this temperature setting. The quality of the output heavily depends on the temperature setting used in the sampling process. And finding the right temperature setting that balances creativity and coherence can be tricky. It's less good for some tasks. The task where we require high precision or factual accuracy, such as technical writing or data-driven reporting, multinomial sampling might not be the best approach due to its inherent randomness. So multinomial sampling in text generation offers the advantage of creating diverse and creative text but poses challenges in terms of coherence, predictability, and quality control. Its suitability largely depends on the specific requirement of the task, especially regarding the need for creativity versus precision.